So, I get a lot of you guys asking me all the time, like, what kind of airbrush should I use? What kind of airbrush should I buy? Like, I went to the local hobby store, they actually had it in stock. This is the Neo for Iwata, I guess. It's a, it says it's a CN. After doing some research and stuff, this gun right here is probably your best bet for starting off. Um, as you can see, I did get a gravity feed, it's not the siphon feed. Um, you, if you're barely starting out, a siphon feed is always good because you don't have to buy all the cups. You don't have to buy the adapters for the bottles and, you know, it just saves you some money not having to buy all that extra stuff. Other than that, I mean, it's a little bit more versatile and these are usually more finer detail than the, you know, siphon feed. Um, let's get this open right here. This gun comes with two different cups so if you don't plan on using a whole lot of paint you can switch off to the smaller cup there we go we got it open and there you go let you have a look at it uh, it's a pretty nice gun it's really nice and chrome and I mean, it has a nice cup and it's nice that it comes with interchangeable cups it was only $65 at the local hobby store. It might be cheaper online. I don't know. I didn't really look at that too much. This comes with the 0.35 millimeter needle and nozzle, which is pretty good for fine details and, you know, for good broad lines as well. As far as that, this is a pretty good airbrush to be starting off with. This is probably, you know, one of the better guns out there for, you know, under $100 definitely I would say recommend buying this if you're barely starting out this is probably the best bet to go with and you know definitely worth the money as far as for paint goes a lot of you guys ask me about paint what kind of paint do I use and have I tried certain paints and this and that well throughout the years I've used lots of paints you know lots of different brands and usually the one easiest to find is Createx you know you get Createx just about at every hobby store everywhere you know um, they have these little starter packs which is convenient if you're barely starting out they have all the colors basic colors for twenty dollars twenty five dollars um, so I mean it, it's a good deal this is a good deal um, the thing we're gonna be using these today uh, I guess this is a little bit of a review not really a review but I'm just gonna give you my feedback on this gun and um, we did buy uh, the opaque set of uh, basic colors here. The opaque color set from Createx. <clears throat> We're gonna use those to be painting a portrait of Nicki Minaj over here on this shirt. And uh, you know, I'm gonna walk you through it. I'm gonna show you how to, you know, how I'm gonna do it, and um, take you through the steps. At the same time, I'm gonna show you, you know, how this gun performs and. You know, let you know that hey, the, even this sixty, seventy dollar gun, you know, it, it'll do what you needed to do. It just, you know, might not do everything that all the other guns do. I mean, as far as like the micro series and those, you get some really fine lines, but these will get you some pretty fine lines as well. All right, so now we got her all hooked up, and we're looking good. Got some hair. So all I've done here is uh, I've taken a picture there and uh, we kind of sketched out some lines here you know just for reference for me I didn't really project this out or anything let me zoom in for you now, nothing too drastic but as you can see they are there Go ahead and uh, get started painting here. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to open that pack of Createx paints here. So um, I'm going to take some white here. Just going to put a little bit of it in here. Take it. As you can see right out the box, this gun sprays. 
and uh, let me show you a quick example here on something. Uh, here we have some paper. I just put some white in there, and um, you know, this gun is able to perform pretty good right out of the box. Now, here we give you some thick lines. And you're able to take those and make some really, really thin lines right out of the box. You know, you get all that right out of the box, which is really nice, really good. I mean, th these work fantastic. For $67, again, if you keep this clean and you keep it running good, this is a good gun. You know what I'm saying? So, okay, so I'm just going to start building up her face using white. See right, right out of the bottle, the Createx white works really good. I'm using about 30 pounds of pressure for my air. Um, so, I mean, it's working pretty good. A lot of you guys ask me what kind of air compressor I use. I use a regular old air compressor that I bought for about $100 at one of the local um, tool stores around here. Um, I mean, as far as buying a compressor, I would say it all depends on how much you plan on airbrushing. If you plan on airbrushing, you know, every day, you know, a few hours a day, extended periods of time, you want to get something with a good sized tank, something that holds a lot of pressure and that won't have to refill over and over, be constantly on, as you will most likely burn out the compressor very quick. Um, the one I'm using right now has a rating of 125 psi and it has a six gallon tank on it. It's not very very big but it's a nice size to where it doesn't turn on constantly, it lets me work quietly and comfortably and it fills up very fast. It doesn't stay on for an extended period of time to fill up. So, I mean, it's all about how much really you can afford, and you know how, how you know how much do you plan on really doing? If you're just starting out, I mean, I wouldn't spend any more than a couple hundred on a compressor, because you, know, you don't know if you're really going to be into it too much. I mean, even if you have a broad interest already, you know, that could suddenly change or it might be too difficult. You know, you don't know. As you can see, I'm working around, I'm building it up, and letting the paint dry in certain areas, going back and hitting it, making it brighter. And, you know, it, it takes time build up tones and you know, get them just right but again you don't want nothing that's flat you want to build up tones you want to give everything shape
Now that I got a good base with the white, <clears throat> I'm gonna go in and start adding some colors here. Now I've started to open the blue here, it's taking me a while. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add the blue. It's the most abundant color in the picture, and I could also use it to add in tones for other parts other than the hair. <clears throat> so um, there you go. I'm gonna put some blue in here. Now uh, I did all the blue, next color I'm going to do is uh, some brown, now the set didn't come with the brown so I'm just going to use some of my brown that I have, this is just create that light brown. Could also just mix up a brown if you like. Uh, even though she is brown skinned, she does not have brown just brown skin so you don't want to just cover the whole thing in brown um, light brown usually I'm gonna just use for the dark tones just to give this white that we kind of grayed out earlier just to give it a, you know the dark tone as far as her face goes there's only a few spots that actually are brown other than that everything else is more like a you know fleshy gold is <laughs> the best way I could describe it Now we got the brown in there. Let's move 
much brown as I think we need. Um, now I'm going to take a little bit of uh, sand here, a little bit of sand. reducer in with this because I want to mix just a little bit of yellow in to give it that sandy like golden like golden fleshy kind of look and we're just gonna throw a tiny bit of yellow in with the sand color give this a good shake Go ahead and spin that brown from earlier. Now we're going to take just some regular opaque yellow, just all the way opaque, with the reducer. Tiny bit of this. We got a couple spots we want to hit with this. We got all the yellow in there. <clears throat> Next, I'm gonna take some pink. Um, I'm gonna use hot pink in this case just to give it the extra blow, the extra pop. Just take a bit of this. Now we're gonna take some pack white again. Can you get about a little bit of a little bit less than a quart in there? And we're gonna take in some peach here. And we're gonna mix it along with the pack white, with the opaque white. And we're just gonna add a little little bit, not too much, just to change the color of the white into a, more like an eggshell. Face here.
And now I'm just going to take some dark brown, mixed in with a little bit of the opaque white. You know, just the residue off of the last one. And uh, I'm going to use this to start adding definition to our face, uh, start, you know, giving everything shape and start adding some definition. Now I'm just going to take some dark brown, all dark brown, no white this time, just to give really nice dark, dark, dark brown. And we're going to use this to start adding extreme definition, um, you know, around the lips, around the eyes, you know, really start cutting, cutting into the colors. Just gonna add a little bit of black to the brown. Just go even deeper.
And there you have it. Um, the video using the H the Neo for Iwata CN Gravity Feed Airbrush. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys take what you learned from here and you're able to use it. Um, again, you don't have to spend all kinds of money to get a good airbrush. You could get a decent quality out of even one of these. Um, I hope you guys liked the way it came out and uh, see you all next time.